Rams though. Oh, Eric Cantona. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh what the oh, heck? Oh, my that? God. This is going to be the most honest video on our first breaking experience. First off, make sure to like and subscribe. If you haven't done so, that would mean the world to us. If you want to wait until the end of the video, that's fine too. But you know, I always like to give a little reminder in the beginning of the video so you can just sit back and enjoy. But this video is going to be really honest, really raw. Show you all everything that we did for our first break when, you know, it was always been a dream of us to kind of just run a break to see how it felt, feels, how much um, we would enjoy it. And there were some good things and there's some bad things as well that we didn't execute correctly. And we're going to break it all down. We're going to break down how much cost uh, how much time it took and then also how much profit do we make money in our break and i think it's gonna be a great video so just sit back and relax and enjoy the show so the biggest cost when it comes to breaking is obviously getting the boxes to rip we decided to run some breaks for EPL Prism, the 2021 new releases. Uh, we bought some hobby boxes and we got some hobby boxes on eBay, some on local card shops, but we only ran two breaks just to see to run it out. So we decided to buy two boxes at around $650 each. So that puts us up at $1,300. Then let's talk about the materials that you should have on hand when you start running a break. So you have to have top loaders, you have to have penny sleeves, you have team bags, right? All that adds up in cost. So that's around $100. So we ran two breaks breaks we had a random team break we also had a random pack break it was 75 dollars per slot so to evaluate it 75 dollars plus 12 packs was around thousand dollars that's where we kind of saw the market was at and we saw, said the same thing you know can we get thousand dollars for these random team packs which would valued around $50. So let's talk about marketing. Marketing is something that you definitely need to do when it comes to breaking because there's so many breakers out there in the world. So to distinguish yourself, either you can do it through price, which is very tough because we can't do that because we don't get distribution prices, but we do have a brand. We do have some sort of brand recognition. It's not very large, but you know, we do understand there's some people that would just want to support us. And you know, we decided to launch it on our Instagram and guess what? We did sell out some five or six, seven slots. So we weren't selling out all of our slots. Like we had 32 slots in the beginning and literally we only sold like probably 12 slots maybe and we were left with 22 on Tuesday. You would expect that we would sell it all out. So shout out to Wax City FC. He runs really good breaks. He gave me an idea. He was like, you know what we do over at Wax City FC. We actually give giveaways within the breaks. I'm like, wow, what a great idea. Let's do that. So we decided to put up a PSA 10 Robin Van Percy Prism Auto uh, for people that entered into our breaks. And that kind of gave a little bit of excitement. We had some people start buying up our slots, but we only sold 50% of our slots by literally Thursday. It was, it was crazy. And on Thursday, I literally texted the boys, Bob, Luigi, and Keen. I was like, hey guys, we might have to start texting our friends and family to buy some more slots because we don't, like, what do you do with all these slots? Shout out to Mark Tan from One of One Soccer Breaks. He gave me the idea of fillers, which is not really new. I just wasn't thinking about it. So he, you know, what filler basically is, is that you start selling some slots for this kind of race for people that, you know, haven't signed up for. I like the idea, it's just that I just, don't know how I felt about giving discounted rates when all these other guys sign up to a break for full price. So me and Bob had an interesting idea. We said, hey, you know what? Let's email everyone that already entered in our breaks and you know, tell them, hey, listen, we're giving out fillers to you all first. And that really helped a lot. We pretty much sold 80% of our last last few spots. And then one thing I realized is that Saturday, I guess the closer it comes to a break, people start buying even more because obviously we started marketing a heavy, got very salesy. And luckily we actually ended up selling all of our spots. But granted, we did have to take some spots for discounted rates. But after we sold out all of our breaks, we're super happy, we're excited, we're celebrating in our group text. And all we had to do was set up our break station. And we took two hours before the break actually started, kind of just basically put our two point camera system together. We basically use OBS and StreamYard. I'm not gonna go too much into detail, but you can just look it up. It's pretty simple. And it it seemed like it was going well, you know, it seemed like it was going well. But one thing, one tip I'm gonna give you guys is make sure you do a dry run because we didn't do a dry run and then all this started happening. So 15 minutes into our stream, we started realizing there's some things that were not working right. OBS was not working right, StreamYard was not working right, our camera system was not working, technology was not helping us at all. But we got through, We, you know, it took us like 30 minutes and we're like, okay, let's do it. We get, just gotta do the randomizer, we, we're good. And for some reason, we decided to pick this cool randomizer. We thought, we thought it was cool. Ended up becoming the biggest nightmare on this stream and it was really bad. 
they proved too much. What? Because they're, they're saying there's more names in this team. Yeah, they're okay. They're saying that we oversold. No, we didn't oversell. So you, can you explain I think, them? Can you match it up to them? Okay, so I think the problem is... They, yeah, can you explain it to them? They're, we're, all, we're all confused right now. <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah, we're all confused now. So luckily the community was so amazing that they were literally walking us through on how to run our own breaks. And the randomizer wasn't working the way we wanted to. So we decided to switch up and use random.org and go simple, right? Sometimes it's good to just go simple. And you know, we did the randomizer and we got to do our breaks. And besides that, it was really smooth sailing. It wasn't too bad. So after the break, we had to sit down. Granted, we had three people, so just kind of take that in mind. And you know, if you're running as a one-man show, it's gonna take a little bit longer, obviously. But it took us around 30 minutes to kind of just sort everything, put everything in penny seeds and top loaders, and you know, to put them in random teams. Probably took an hour, so an hour and a half maybe. And then we had to ship them, right? Average shipping cost around six dollars and fifty-eight cents. Um, just because we had some people on an international basis and we did charge international shipping for $10, but most of the shipping cost around $15. So we still had to eat the cost anyways. So let's break down the cost and profits that we made from this break. Cost wise, we spent $1,300 for two EPL prison boxes. Another $100 goes to top loaders and penny sleeves. And the last thing is shipping $109 total, which puts us at $1,509. Revenue wise, we made around $1,800. And that's after PayPal fees, after the discounts, after on top of that, more discounts, because we made discounts in the chat because the experience was that bad. And that leaves us to around $291 in profit. Some things that we could have done better or some things that were really out of control were a few things. First thing is EPL prison boxes. They're not really the hottest thing on the internet right now, I believe. I mean, I'm just thinking about it. If I put Tops Chrome Sapphire on the website and sold packs like that, I think it would sell out pretty darn quick. And another thing is EPL Prism started releasing mega boxes, cereal boxes, and really, why would you want to enter in a break where you could literally not get a team for $50 where you put 50 bucks into like a mega box or whatever it is, cereal box. I don't know what it's 50 bucks, but you get the point. And you get actual cards. So autos weren't really a big factor when it came to people looking for EPL Prism. And a second thing I would say is, you know, we didn't do a dry run. Like I said in the video beforehand, we should have done the dry run. That would have been a lot better. So I want to just give the shout out to all these breakers that are doing their thing, man. There's a lot of big time breakers. There's a newfound respect for a lot of people that run breaks. You know, a lot of times, like I said, people don't realize how much work goes into it and the last thing I'm gonna say is this this begs the question were, are we gonna run more breaks and the question is yes originally I was just gonna say hey Bob do you enjoy running breaks but because of what happened last time um, our first break we cannot go down like that we're gonna run more breaks and I we're gonna bring some really cool boxes out there so you guys can participate one thing I'll definitely say I'm probably gonna run, run random teams anymore I don't really like how random teams are ran but just because some people will not end up getting their teams, which I really don't know how I feel about that, but that's just a personal preference. Let me know in the comments below. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in and kind of just showing, you know, our honest review, because like I said, we like to keep it real with y'all. And yeah, we're just, this is a whole entire learning experience and love you guys. Much I see you.